the Candidate Corner. This program is designed to help you, the electorate, to listen to the candidate for various offices around the country. We ask them questions, they respond, and then you judge as to whether or not this particular person, man or woman, regardless of their party affiliation, is somebody that you want to vote for. Joining us today is a gentleman who is a candidate for the 35th district in California. I'm there sorry, you go. Mike Cargat. <laughs> uh, I just uh, got stuck there. Welcome to the corner. Thank you for having me. So question number one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just in case you didn't remember the rules, Mike has five questions plus a bonus, a bonus question, and he has two minutes to answer each question. If he goes over, it's my job to play bad guy and tell him he's got to stop. So here we go. Question number one. Mike, in your district, the 35th in California, what is the most important issue do you think of your constituents? Go. Jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Right now, people have had our economy shut down. They're using mandates, vaccine mandates, mask mandates to, to keep people out of their jobs. Uh, they were dependent on the, the government subsidies, but it's jobs, jobs, jobs. We had an egregious bill, AB5, that was put into place by the unions to, to shatter the independent workers. I mean, I think they call them gig workers, the guys who are trying to do it their way. Uh, the state of California is extremely hostile towards independent contractors and independent businesses. And we've been chasing them out of the state for years now by the thousands and, and what people don't understand and and i talk to unions all the time i'm not an anti-union guy i like the, the the idea of a negotiated wage and negotiated benefits but the public sector unions particularly have to understand that if you don't have the tax base that comes in from independent businesses you can't fund these infrastructure projects you can't fund your teachers you can't fund your police so it's all about independent businesses and relieving the tax burden and the regulatory burden on the businesses here to try and get them to stay in california first and maybe we can even get some of them back so that's that's the that's the main focus right now outside of that it's safety daryl you got it all right and when i look at california I I think of education. Now, we know currently we got critical race theory and all these other abnormal ideologies and isms going through the state. How would you take the educational system in your district to make it better for all, not just to appease all? Well, that comes with empowering the parent. And that's school choice. We have to have the, the parent who knows their child better than anyone. What is the best learning environment for my child? If it's a public school, great. If it's not, then we need to have a, a choice. You need to be able to, to take your child into a public or, or a private environment or a charter school or even homeschool. Uh, there are a number of different programs that are on, that are hopefully will be on the ballot coming up in the midterms. but. I want to empower the parent to parent their child and make decisions on their own child's behalf and not the state and not the federal government. That's not their job. They don't need to teach our kids. Our kids need to be taught by their parents and not just academics, but the values and the traditions of our country need to be imparted by their family. I run as the family man because that's who I am. I want to give the families the opportunity to raise the next greatest generation and not a bunch of union teachers. I love that answer. Dan? Yes, sir. Um, question number three. If you're elected, what should your constituents expect from you? Well, first and foremost, access. The chief complaint I get about my opponent is they're never getting their phone calls returned and they're never having emails returned. A long time ago, I learned this from the, the president of Paramount, uh, that she, her staff had a standing order that all phone calls would be returned within 24 hours. I can at least do that for every constituent. And they have to, see, here's the thing. 
people don't understand, and I didn't either, when you're electing a representative, it's not that you want me to represent your values. I have my own values, and you have to decide if my values are your values. I am pro-God, pro-family, pro-life, pro-jobs, and pro-police. Now, if those are your values, then vote for me because those are the values I will take to Washington, D.C. I'm not going to place my thumb in there or my finger in the air and determine what most people want. I will vote along my values. You have to decide whether my values are your values. Okay, Daryl. Sorry, I had to put my flag up. <laughs> he hit every part that I love. My country. All right. Um, my... You, you, tilt the, you tilt the scale right there. I got a question for you. You know, people have a lot of statements about, you know, you got all that, the marijuana growers in California, they're making all that money and they can't put it nowhere and because the federal government hasn't officially legalized it. Would you be a person that will stand right now and say, if the federal government was able to legalize marijuana federally, not statewide, federally, in your state, you would ha use that taxation money or request that that taxation money would go to building families. Um, you know, there's a, there's a chronic illness in this country and it's called, you know, I hate to say it, but it's, it's concerning those fathers that you know, that are separate from their children. And inspiration comes by the child, okay? Let's just be honest. I mean, a man has a child and he wants to see the child better. It, that, that departed father would love to be there, but he, he can't make enough money. He can't make child support. Would you actually stand and say, I could use that money to help get these men jobs, help get these men educated? Would you say that you could get them trained to have a position to make family life easier and better so they can spend time with their children? Could you stand Absolutely, Daryl. Absolutely. One of the chief things missing out of our educational system is vocational training. Not everybody needs to go to college and not everybody needs to have a student loan that's going to take him in debt for years and years. If the federal government legalizes marijuana, then that revenue should absolutely be earmarked for families and and again i'm the family value guy uh, now when i started this race the whole idea of of marijuana and cannabis and all this stuff i was told stay away from it it's sort of, sort of a third rail but after what i've seen out of big pharma after the we you know we've had all these institutional drug companies run rampant through our country my thoughts on this are a little bit different now. I think we should try alternatives to big pharma. I know my mom has benefited specifically from CBD oils and, and research that has come out of this. So I am not opposed to it. What I am is a single group of, of pharmaceutical companies controlling everything that we put in, every, every vaccine, everything, and not trying alternatives that are a little better for your health and maybe a little more effective in keeping you healthy. Mike, you're the family guy. I love you. All right, go ahead, Dan. <laughs> um, let me uh, let me follow up uh, and ask a, a, a two-part question. So it would be five, five and six. Um, part one, what do you think you owe your constituents if you get elected and go to Washington and how do you assure part two then how do you assure if you are elected and you go there you don't get taken over by the swamp well first how do I what do I owe them I owe them to never deviate from my core values because that's how they will elect me again pro God pro family pro life pro jobs pro police and I will not deviate from that. Um, the second part, how do I not get uh, consumed by the swamp? Well, let me tell you guys who I really am. I'm the most conservative guy running for California, co the congressional seat here, maybe in the whole nation right now. 
the last cycle, I was actually unendorsed by the California Republican Party for being too conservative. I'm the only, I'm the only candidate that had that occur because I came out stridently for the nuclear family, for the biblical definition of marriage, and my stance against the LGBTQ indoctrination of our children. And when I did that, it was too much for the California Republican Party, and by extension, Kevin McCarthy. So I am the most conservative guy you will have on, and I will not deviate, and you can count on that. Now the, going to the swamp? I, I the swamp, The swamp will run from me. That's why they're trying so hard to keep me out. I've been attacked personally multiple times by George Soros and Media Matters and Axios. Uh, last cycle, it was it was the three of us that were being attacked. Me, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Lauren Boebert. Uh, those two won their race. They gave California up. And when I say they, you know who I'm talking about, both parties. I believe I won my race. I believe I won my race handily because of the makeup of my district. I have a very conservative district, and there's no way that people who love to go see drag races and NASCAR, I have four churches that have 10,000 plus members in my district. And you're telling me these people voted for a Guatemalan communist? I don't think so. Okay, unfortunately time is up. Mike, uh, how can people follow your campaign? Just go to MikeCargile.com. M-I-K-E-C-A-R-G-I-L-E. Smile, it's Cargile. MikeCargile.com will take you to my congressional site. And you can read about a whole host of things, I opinions I have on a number of different issues. The most important issue right now, though, in our country is election integrity. And uh, at some point, I'd love to dive into the web. Well, the lawsuit we have, we're actually headed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals right now. And they're terrified because we're entering in a win-win situation. And uh, this is the most important legal action taking place in the country right now. And we will save the United States. And by extension, the world. Because if the United States goes dark, so does the globe. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we'll have you on before the election. And good luck to you. Thank you. You've been listening to Candidates in the Corner, where you can hear what people think about and how it affects you and your decision to vote for them. Thank you and goodbye.